Proton pump inhibitors, it's a class of drugs that inhibit hydrogen potassium ATPase, and by this they decrease gastric secretion. To explain their mechanism of action, we have to recall physiology. Stomach has three major types of cells. It's chief cells, parietal cells, and G cells. Parietal cells have a specific transporter called hydrogen potassium ATPase. By hydrogen potassium ATPase, parietal cells produce hydrochloric acid, and also parietal cells produce intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is essential for vitamin B12 absorption, and hydrochloric acid we require to create the acidic pH inside the stomach. The function of chief cells is to produce pepsinogen, but pepsinogen is an active enzyme. In order to be activated, acidic pH cleaves a part of pepsinogen, thereby creating pepsin. And the function of pepsin is protein's digestion. G cells produce gastrin. Gastrin directly stimulates parietal cells, but also gastrin stimulates enterochromaffin like cells. And in response to this, enterochromaffin like cells produce histamine. Histamine acts on H2 receptors on parietal cells, thereby stimulating them. The major factor that stimulates G cells is amino acids. Mostly it's phenylalanine and tryptophan. Also, stomach has D cells. The function of D cells is to produce somatostatin that inhibits the function of G cells. The most significant regulation of gastric secretion is provided by nervous vagus. Nervous vagus, by secretion of acetylcholine, stimulates M3 receptors on parietal cells, thereby activating them. Also, nervous vagus directly inhibits the function of D cells, and simultaneously, nervous vagus produces gastrin releasing peptide that stimulates G cells. Why do we need hydrochloric acid? Hydrochloric acid have a few very important functions. First of all, hydrochloric acid converts pepsinogen into pepsin, and pepsin provides proteins digestion. Also, hydrochloric acid participates in iron absorption. Hydrochloric acid converts plus 3 charge iron into the plus 2 charge iron. And recall that we can absorb only iron with plus 2 charge. Also, hydrochloric acid suppresses growth and proliferation of Helicobacter pylori. But in the same time, hydrochloric acid is a very dangerous substance, because it can cause mucosa damage, initially it's erosions, but then erosions can progress to ulcers. Usually, mucosa damage occurs to stomach or duodenum. But if gastroesophageal reflux is present, the same mucosa damage can occur in the esophagus. So to prevent mucosa damage, we prescribe proton pump inhibitors, which block the production of hydrochloric acid. The lower the amount of hydrochloric acid, the lower is the risk of GRD-related mucosa damage, and also the lower is the risk of mucosa damage to stomach and duodenum. Basically, it's the reason why we use proton pump inhibitors for gastritis type B and zollinger ellison syndrome. But because hydrochloric acid has a few physiological functions, with decreasing hydrochloric acid production we have a few side effects. First of all, the lower is the amount of hydrochloric acid, the lower is the conversion of pepsinogen into pepsin, and thereby protein digestion decrease. Also, because we require hydrochloric acid for iron absorption, with decreasing hydrochloric acid, the conversion of plus 3 charge iron to plus 2 charge iron decrease, and thereby iron absorption decrease. And decreasing iron absorption can cause iron deficiency anemia. Also, with decreasing hydrochloric acid, pH inside the stomach increase, and now more alkaline pH creates a more suitable environment for Helicobacter pylori. So basically, increasing gastric pH disinhibits the growth and proliferation of Helicobacter pylori. Another important side effect is related to oncogenesis. The problem with more alkaline intragastric pH is that increasing gastric pH stimulates G cells to produce more gastrin. 
So increasing G cells activity creates hypergastrinemia and gastrin stimulates growth and proliferation of enterochromaffin-like cells. So in response to such strong stimulation, enterochromaffin-like cells undergo hyperplasia. And hyperplasia of enterochromaffin-like cells increase the risk of neuroendocrine tumor. Nowadays, we have six most common proton pump inhibitors. It's omeprazole, azomeprazole, lansoprazole, dexlansoprazole, pantoprazole, and rabeprazole. They are very similar, and basically the major difference between them is the dosage. They all are taken one to two times a day, and the most important feature is that they all should be taken 30 to 40 minutes before meal. To explain why, here we have parietal cells, and when we intake proton pump inhibitors, initially they are inactive. To be activated, they require hydrogen. So in fasting state, hydrogen potassium ATPase produce small amount of hydrogen molecules. In response to this, small amount of proton pump inhibitors move towards hydrogen molecules. In acidic pH, proton pump inhibitors become activated. And with activation, they inhibit the function of hydrogen potassium ATPase, and thereby they inhibit production of hydrochloric acid. The problem is that in this scenario, hydrogen potassium ATPase produce small amount of hydrogen. And because of this, only small amount of proton pump inhibitors becomes activated. So there is very weak inhibition of hydrogen potassium ATPase, and generally it's not very effective. But if we consume proton pump inhibitors 30 to 40 minutes before meal, in this time period of 30 to 40 minutes, food intake will greatly increase the production of hydrogen by hydrogen potassium ATPase. The higher the amount of hydrogen, the higher the amount of proton pump inhibitors that will income to hydrogen potassium ATPase. Thereby, the more potent will be the inhibition of hydrogen potassium ATPase. So by this, we can greatly potentiate the effect of proton pump inhibitors on gastric secretion. So the major concept is that proton pump inhibitors for their effect require a lot of hydrogen. And the maximal secretion of hydrogen can be provoked by food intake. <laughs>